Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today is one of only three women currently competing in a NASCAR National Series. She's a former ARCA Midwest Tour Rookie of the Year who's now looking to make a name for herself in the NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series. Natalie Decker, so good to meet you. So good to meet you. Loving Thank the you. custom dress, by the way. <laughs> Thank very, you so very much. Very, very cool. So you took a, a car service here. How hard is it for another driver to get a five-star rating from you? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> Not hard. No? <laughs> I don't like driving on the highway. I usually don't drive on the highway that often. I'd rather Why? take an Uber or a car service somewhere <laughs> than drive myself. Why? I don't know. It's just like... I've never really liked it that much. It's not that like I want to go like crazy fast or anything, but it's so much more dangerous out on the road than I feel like it is on the racetrack. That, that's a very interesting thing to hear and kind of terrifies me to drive. <laughs> because I look at, I went to my first NASCAR race earlier this year, and it's intense. Like I was getting whiplash, I think, watching the <laughs> watching cars. Yeah, yeah watching the cars. Go by so and it's so hot, and there's fires, and sometimes there's crashes. But you really feel like you're safer on the track. Yes, I do, yeah. especially with NASCAR and all their rules they have now and the gear we wear. It's really, really safe now. Do you remember your first race that you went to? Yes, I do. It was for my birthday, uh -huh. and it was at the Milwaukee Mile, and I think I fell asleep during the race. You fell, How did you fall asleep? Uh, it's well, loud. It was so hot, and it was in the stands, and I was just like laying on my mom's lap. I think I was like five, and I just took a nap. Did you know right away, because it's a male-dominated sport, let's be honest, did you know that that was what you wanted to do, even though it was all guys? I knew I wanted to do something different than a lot of the friends I had growing up. Um, I either wanted to be like a doctor, or I even thought about being a football player at one point when I was really little, but that was like really unrealistic, I feel like. Um, but my, my dad had owned a racetrack, so I always grew up around motorsports, and I think I was about like four or five when I told my dad that I really wanted to race NASCAR, and NASCAR was like a dream of mine to be in. And in the beginning, is it true that you, you used to act like you were one of the guys, like you tried to fit in that way? Yeah, like when you first get in, it's hard to because you're surrounded by guys. So you want to fit in, and you try to be one of the guys, and race like them, act like them, and do like stuff outside of racing with them to like feel accepted. And now you feel like you can be yourself? Yeah, I definitely feel like I can be myself. As I got older and like found out like who I truly am and like I'm really girly now. I used to like not be so girly, but now I'm like super girly and I just like express that and be myself. And it's just like way more fun at the racetrack being yourself and then being able to go out there and race against guys. Has that has that helped you? Because I always think when you can be yourself, that's when you're at your best, no matter what you're doing. It has. It has helped me like mentally just to know like that I'm happy and I'm happy where I'm at and it doesn't matter what other people think and that I can be myself and a race car driver all in one. How'd the guys handle it when you started really being who you were instead of trying to be one of the guys? I don't know if they really noticed a difference because as I started to be more myself and more girly, I was already moving up into the NASCAR like series. So it was like short tracks when I was racing in Wisconsin and the Midwest is when I like truly didn't know exactly, you know, that like who I was and who I wanted to be. Do you feel like the NASCAR community has embraced you? You know, that's a good question. The younger age definitely has because they grew up racing against with females and yeah. other girls and that's all they know so they accept it and they understand because they don't know any different but then those older guys who have been in NASCAR before like women were even allowed in the pits um, it takes some time to gain their respect and yeah that gets difficult sometimes like guys who who have participated in NASCAR or fans or both both all all around so what kind of things have you experienced or seen that made you realize that they were not up with the times it was when I was younger um, that I saw it more uh -huh. and that they expressed it more when I was trying to make my way into the NASCAR series. And there was some things that other drivers would say, like, oh, you're not supposed to be here. Like, you know, a like, driver would say you're not yeah, supposed to be here. Well, I beat him, I think. And then oh, you well. tell me, like, no, you you should go back racing go karts. <laughs> what? Were you yeah. like, I just beat you? Yeah. I was 12. I didn't know what to say. Wow. <laughs> did, that, did that happen a lot? It, when I was younger, it was happening a lot. But then as time went on, and, you know, Danica was such a big star in NASCAR, and she paved the way for a lot of females just in the motorsport industry. So it just became normal for all these younger guys coming up into the sport. Your family is really close with Danica, right? Yes. So there's the story that your Aunt Sue set up Danica's parents on a blind date. 
Yes, so my dad raced snowmobiles and all his brothers and so did my aunt. My aunt raced snowmobiles back in the day and Danica's mom was on her team and Danica's dad raced snowmobiles against my dad. So they all knew each other and she set him up on a date and Danica's middle name is Sue after my aunt. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So crazy? did you kind of get close to Danica because of this? I came really close with her parents. Um, she was always okay. so busy. I've only never seen her every once in a while, but I definitely leaned on her dad a lot and still do um, for advice because he went through it with Danica. Yeah. And I know my dad definitely leans on him too and loves talking to him about racing just because he went through it with her. What are some of the things that he tells you that like, hey, we went through this, so here's some advice for this situation? He definitely just tells me a lot about like sponsorships and how mm -hmm. to hold yourself in different situations. Just because she went through that when no one else was really going through it. So yeah. they like knew the bad side of it and the good side of it. Is it harder for a woman to get sponsorships? Yes and no. It's hard to get sponsorships in general, mm -hmm. but I would say sometimes it's easier being a female because there's other products you can go for, like girls, like any girl clothing or makeup and stuff like that. So that makes it like a bigger broad. Of, yeah, that's a positive. But, yeah, but it's still so difficult to find sponsor for any race car driver. Do you feel like little girls gravitate towards you who like NASCAR and now they have another woman that they can look up to? Yes, it's so cute. I love being at the track and seeing my fans, especially the little girls. I was in an incident not too long ago. I don't remember what track it was, but someone wrecked me and I was really mad walking back to my trailer. Like I didn't want to talk to anyone. And this like little four-year-old girl just came up to me and hugged me. She's like, oh, I've been waiting all day to meet you. Aww. And I was like, okay, I'm not mad anymore. <laughs> Isn't that the best? Yeah. When you see like a little girl who looks up to you, I always think that's so cool. And you're, do you feel like you're kind of paving the way? Because Danica, I think, started it, but then you're another one who's paving the way for more women to get involved in this. Yeah, she definitely paved the way for a lot of females, but I just want to, you know, come along and pave the way even more mm -hmm. and really be myself and show that you can be a female and you can be a race car driver and you can be, you know, beautiful and smart and all those things and still go out there and beat the guys. Is that a thing? Like, people think, oh, you can't be pretty. You yeah. can't be beautiful and race in NASCAR and do this. <laughs> I feel like that's a lot like a thing for a lot of females in a, anything that's male dominated. I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. So what kind of uh, issues arise for you because of that? Sometimes they don't take you seriously yeah. or they don't think you know what you're talking about. And that's when like, you know, I have to work harder and study harder and make sure I know what I'm talking about and know what I'm doing so I can be taken seriously. Yeah. Or they think that you got to where you are because, because you're of your beautiful. Looks. Yeah, I hate that one. <laughs> I always say it's like, well, then there are supermodels in the yeah. world. Hire supermodels to do this yes. job. There's obviously a skill that you have. That's interesting. Okay, so you're in the NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series now. For those who don't know, what are the different series of NASCAR? There's three levels in the NASCAR series. It goes Cup is the top, and then Xfinity, and then it goes the Truck Series. Okay. Um, they also, there's like ARCA and then K&N, which are like way at the bottom that NASCAR also owns, but they're not really considered the top three series of like NASCAR. So there's really three series and you can jump around, you can go to the Cup Series right away or go to Xfinity. You don't have to go like through them, like trucks, Xfinity and then Cup. Yeah. It's really confusing, but you, it's just all about sponsorship and your experience and you know, your confidence if you wanna go do that race in the higher level or if you want to stay in the truck or what's your goal my goal is definitely the cup series okay. it has been my goal since i was very young and i'm gonna make it happen <laughs> you have said you're how tall are you five one five one okay yeah. you've said you're kind of undersized for for racing how are you able to kind of turn do you think it's a disadvantage or a positive um, well, it's a disadvantage because for some parts of uh -huh. getting fitted in the truck, it takes a long time and my team has to work really hard on making sure I can reach the pedals or the steering wheel, I can like see over it. So that takes a lot of work. <laughs> but other than that, like once you're in the car, we're all the same size. So. Right. Also, isn't it good being lighter in the car? It is and it isn't. Um, I'm not completely sure but I remember one year they were like you need to eat more cheeseburgers because we need more left side weight <laughs> oh my gosh so do you no I didn't I was like I'm not eating more cheeseburgers <laughs> speaking of weight 
Is it true that you lose six to eight pounds of water weight during a race? That is very true. It is insane how much weight you lose. You're, That's like a lot of you. Yeah, your suit is bigger on you and you have to tighten your belts as you race because you get smaller. What? Yeah. How do you stay focused when you're losing that much weight? In it's how many hours? Mentally, yeah. It, racing is very mentally hard and physically. But yeah. once you get like physically fatigued, that's when you mentally need to be strong and be able to like drive the car when you're tired. How do you prepare for that? Lots of training, heat training, lots of hydration, eating right, which is hard because I love like dessert and candy. So it's well, definitely- Well, they're wanting you to gain weight, so <laughs> right. that helps. So you can do specific workouts that will help you train your mind when your body is tired. Yes, you can, and you can do other workouts because you want to be strong for a long period of time, not just lift heavy weights. So just like lifting lighter for a longer period of time is a lot what I do in the gym. Like stamina? Yeah. Wow, do you box? I feel like that would be yes, a good one to do. Yes, it is amazing. That is one of the most good workouts to do for that because it like really helps with being strong for a long period of time yeah. and your heart rate's up and you're hot and... And you have to stay, your mind focused. has to stay so on yeah. even though you're fatigued. Yeah. Okay, we'll have more with Natalie Decker when we come back. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game, on FS1 to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.